Welcome to the video series Introduction to Processing. In this video, we'll talk about how to do basic animation with processing. Uh, in the last video, we'll talk about how to do a basic static sketch, which is basically just drawing pictures, uh, everything's on one frame. In this video, we'll talk about how to do animation, and so uh, in processing, a program, which is also called a sketch, is, uh, consists of two methods. A uh, method is basically a sequence of code that does something. Uh, these two methods are setup and draw. Setup is a method that helps us initialize our variables, set up the window size, etc. Draw repeats uh, 60 times a second. So this is a loop. Uh, this is what's responsible for the animation uh, of the program. Um, and so let's uh, start out with uh, what a sketch looks like. So you have the setup method, and above the setup method is all the global variables that you want to declare. These are the variables that you want to use in, in, your, in your program. And then in the setup method, you can initialize those variables. Again, we can declare them up here. We initialize them in setup. Uh, we can also initialize things like the backup, background color, the window size, etc. This setup method is only run once at the beginning of the program. It's run automatically. You don't have to call it. Uh, once that's uh, been run, then everything is initialized. And then the draw method also will run automatically. And this will run 60 frames per second. Uh, this is how we create the illusion of animation. And the idea is that inside of the body of the draw method, um, we can update the variables and then redraw them. And there's the, the animation. So as an example, so say I declare a variable int x. So this is a variable x that is an integer. It's been declared. This is a global variable. I can use this everywhere in the program. But it's not initialized. In other words, it has no value. And in setup, I can initialize x. I can say x is 5. Again, this is run only once. So this is, all, this is done running. And then draw takes over. And this is going to run repeatedly 60 times a second. At every time, x is updated. So the previous value of x, uh, add 1 to it. And then that's the new value of x. And so x increases by 1 60 times a second. Uh, and so that's basically how a program uh, runs. Let's actually do this. So. So here it is, uh, voice setup. Let's just do, here's the setup. So for example, I can initialize things like the size of my uh, windows to say 800 pixel, 600 pixel. And then here's the draw method. So let's say I can, uh, draw, oh, actually, no, I'll do that later. Let me, let me do a fill. Let's do a red fill. And we'll draw a circle um, at some random position. Maybe uh, so. The radius is 50. So the diameter is 100. Uh, so this is a circle. If I were to run this, then you have a, f a red circle in the middle of the uh, uh, in the screen, but it's not moving because we're drawing it at the same location every time. So even though this is uh, drawing quickly, uh, 60 times a second. Our, uh, our circle is, is staying the same because we're not changing the position of the circle. So if I were to put in here, for example, something as simple as, so it turns out that mouse x is a reserve variable that keeps track of where the mouse is. Mouse y is the reserve variable that keeps track of where the, uh, the y value of the mouse is. And so if I were to do that and I run this again, notice it gets something like this every frame it's drawing the circle where my mouse is and it's doing this repeatedly uh, and notice that it remembers the path because we're not really we're just drawing these circles on top of each other at uh, every additional frame now if I want to clear some of the previous path I can I can do a clear background so if I draw a background that is say white or something then that means that Every time I draw, I clear the background so that I make everything go away so that I only see my current position. So if I run this, notice I get something like this. It's amazing how that with only really a few lines of code, right, really four lines of code, we get something pretty amazing. Uh, processing, that's really is the philosophy, is that we can do amazing things with very simple uh, lines of, uh, of code. Okay, so that's the that's the code that we just did. Now let's do something a little bit different. Um, instead of using mouse x, mouse y, let's try to animate this with some uh, some update variable. 
So suppose I create a new variable that keeps track of my mouse, and let's just say that I want to create a so float is for decimal numbers. Uh, this is, I'm going to keep track of the position of the x variable, position of the y variable, the velocity in the x direction, and maybe a radius. So I declare all my global variables. They're not, they haven't been initialized yet, so I'll initialize them in the setup method. Let's say I'll put this at the width over 2. So again, uh, processing has a lot of reserved variables. One of them is called width. Width is initialized as soon as you specify the size of the window. So because I specify this as 800, the width has a value of 800. Uh, and you can imagine that the height is another reserve variable. When, I, when something is reserved, it's usually color-coded. Uh, so height has a value of 600. So I'm putting the, the, my ball at the, position, at the center of the screen. Uh, I'm going to initialize the velocity, say, to be like 5 pixel per frame. This is 5 pixel per frame. And then the radius, let's make it 50 pixels. So again, this is where I initialize all my variables. And here, when I draw it, I can uh, put in the position of the x variable, position of the y variable, and maybe the two times the radius, because this is actually the width, which is the diameter. So I want this to be two times the radius. So there it is. Um, but again, if I do this, this is going to be a ball that is centered at this position, but it's not changing because these values are not changing. So I like to kind of, uh, I like to do a, a, an update here. So let's say that at each frame, I want to update my position by 5 pixels. So at every frame, my position is changed, is moved over to the right by 5 pixels, which is the velocity of x. If I do that, then I get um, a ball at the center at the, at the, the middle, and then it'll move to the right. And then it's still drawing, but it's no longer in the visible screen. So how do I make it move back? Well, I can do I can do a check. So if the position of x is bigger than the width, in other words, as soon as the by the way, well, let's just talk about this. So sometimes people might think that maybe whenever the position is equal to the width, I can try to change direction. As, but what happens is that when you're adding by these discrete values, it's possible that you might jump over and miss the width entirely. So what we want here is we want this to be greater than, uh, bigger than the width. In other words, the first time the position is bigger than the width, I'm going to take my velocity and negate it. In other words, I'm going to change the direction so that next frame, when I'm adding the velocity, I'm actually subtracting. So I'm actually, actually going to move left uh, the very first time that I cross the, the width of the uh, screen. So let's try that. So notice it bounced back. And then it goes away, so we have to fix that. So we can also say this. Uh, two vertical lines in Java is OR. So if the position of x is less than 0, so either if the position of x is bigger than the width or less than 0, then I want to change my direction. So if I do that, then I get uh, this nice animation of a bouncing ball back and forth. Again, not a lot of code, but we get something pretty cool. Okay, so um, that's basically what I want to talk about in this video, some basic animation. Uh, so maybe a couple things you want to try is to you can add in uh, some kind of velocity y and then try to make it uh, bounce uh, in a diagonal de direction. You can also make it so that it bounces from the top and the bottom and left and right. By the way, this one right here, it actually bounces right in the middle of the, the ball and not at the edge of the ball. So you should think about that and see how you can make it bounce so that it's a, a clean bounce.